Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Matilda. I was going to make popcorn for the first time. I found a recipe online. I drizzled some oil in a pan. I heated it up for a while. Then I added all the kernels into the pan. I think I overheated the oil. Suddenly the kitchen turned into a war zone. The kernels started popping one by one and jumping out of the pan. They were flying at my face, my arms. Every time a kernel touched me, I shrieked. Finally, I managed to close the lid on the pan. I had little burns all over my body. My sister Iris came into the kitchen. Where's the popcorn? We're already halfway into the movie. Mom wants the popcorn now, she said. I got mad and screamed, can't you see what's happening? I burned myself trying to make you popcorn. My mom appeared at the door. She looked around and asked, why are you yelling? What is going on in this kitchen? I replied, about to burst into tears. All of a sudden, the kernel started to pop. I got burns all over my face and my arms. Mom rolled her eyes and said, how can you be so clumsy? Grab the broom and sweep the floor. Then she turned to my sister and said with a giggle, honey, let's go back to our movie. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see what happens next. Iris was my mom's favorite. She didn't even feel the need to hide it. I was the Cinderella of this household, and they weren't even my stepmom or stepsister. My parents divorced three years ago. The fighting was so bad that I wasn't even upset about their divorce. My dad moved to Russia for a job. He started working at an oil rig in Siberia. He didn't even have an internet connection where he was. By the way, we had someone else living with us at home, my <laughs> lovely grandma. Unfortunately, my mom was as horrible to her as she was to me. After my grandfather passed, my grandma remarried. My mom was against that marriage. She left home the day grandma remarried and they never saw each other again. Grandma lived in another country. One day, the doorbell rang. I opened the door and saw her standing in front of me. I was so surprised I invited her in. <laughs> When my mom saw my grandma, she got upset with me for letting her inside. She asked my grandma rudely what she came for. My grandma said her second husband had died and she needed a place to stay. She had a hard time walking because of an issue in her legs. I begged my mom to let her stay with us because she obviously needed care. My mom was against it at first, but then she found out that my grandma had a retirement plan. She only said yes to get her hands on grandma's retirement savings. My grandma was my favorite person in the world. I loved taking care of her. I went to her room whenever I could. We would chat for hours. Once, she shared, Iris never talks to me. She doesn't even make eye contact when I'm around. This really gets me. Why do you think she's acting this way? Laughing, I said to her, <laughs> Iris and my mom don't love anyone else but themselves. I'm afraid the only love you will get in this house will be from me. <laughs> Since she had trouble walking, I bought my grandma a walking stick. Thanks to that stick, she was able to get around the house more easily. Normally, she would eat her meals in her room. One night, I insisted that she come to the kitchen for dinner. I was the designated cook in the house, and I cooked a dish she really loved. Grandma was able to come to the kitchen thanks to her walking stick. My mom jumped when she saw her. Wait, what? We can't even eat in peace in this house? She took her plate and left. Iris hurried along behind her. Grandma was so sad. She tried not to cry, but I couldn't hold back my tears. I gave her a hug and we broke down crying. I apologize on their behalf, Grandma. You don't deserve this at all, I said. She started crying too. We cried for a long time, embracing each other. One day there was a presentation at school about college applications. They suggested those who wanted to go to college should get a head start. That night, I mentioned it to my mom. I'm going to study really hard and get accepted to a good school, I said. Why are you thinking about college? You've got so much work to do at home. Just finish high school. That's enough for you. You better get those other ideas out of your head, she yelled. I said, Mom, do you expect me to stay at home and take care of you for the rest of my life? I want to go to college. My mom looked at me condescendingly. Matilda, you are not capable of going to college. Even if you got accepted, I'm sure you won't be able to finish it, she replied. Iris sided with her. I'm sure she can't do it, Mommy. She can't even make popcorn, but she dreams of going to college, <laughs> she said, mocking me with a laugh. These words really upset me. I went to my grandma's room in tears. She comforted me. I will talk to your mom. Give me that awesome walking stick, please, she said. Grandma slowly walked around to talk to my mom. 
Mom was surprised when she saw her. With a determined tone, Grandma said, Matilda will go to college. I will not let you destroy her future. I will take care of her from now on and pay for her college. Mom said, how long did it take you to get here from your room? You can't even walk straight. How will you take care of her? And began laughing hysterically. Mom shook her finger at us. Almost hissing, she said, don't you tell me what to do again or I will kick both of you out of this house. Understand? I helped Grandma return to her room. I was planning to do this in a few months, but it's time now. Can you please bring my phone? I have an important call to make, she said. It's time for what? Who are you going to talk to, Grandma? I asked. Hang on tight. Tomorrow morning you'll be in for a big surprise, she said smiling. When I woke up the next morning, I ran to my grandma's room. It was empty. She'd left a short note for me on her bed. Bring your mom and your sister in front of the house exactly at 10 o'clock. I waited impatiently until 10. Then I told my mom and my sister that we needed to go outside. They were intrigued to hear that grandma had a surprise for us. When we went outside, we saw a convoy of luxury cars parked in front of our house. When the driver saw us, he ran to the car in the front to open the door. We all screamed when we saw who was getting out of the car. It was my grandma, except that she looked great and she had a fabulous dress on. Someone else got out of the car. He was grandma's age, but dressed very differently. He was wearing a local costume and a huge crown over his head. Dear Philippe, let me make the introductions. My daughter, Helen, my younger granddaughter, Iris, and our new princess, dear Matilda. When Iris heard this, she screamed. What? A princess? My mom was in shock. She watched the events unfold without blinking. In his baritone, the elderly man began to speak. I am Philippe IV, the king of Tanuvatu. This is for the official record. I don't have a blood heir. Therefore, one of my wife's heirs will take the throne after me. We had three candidates for the throne. Helen, Iris, and Matilda. My dear wife lived with the candidates for some time to determine who will become the future queen. She has finally come to the decision that Matilda is the perfect fit for the throne. From today on, she will use the official title of Princess Matilda. When she takes the throne, her title will be Queen Matilda the I. I congratulate her on behalf of my country and my people. <laughs> At that moment, someone came and put an incredible cloak on me. There were many news crews around. They were constantly taking photos. Grandma <laughs> opened her arms wide. I ran to hug her. Grandma, you look fabulous, and you don't seem to have an issue with your legs either, I said. She smiled. <laughs> I trained for a month with a walking coach just to be able to walk that way. I must have done a pretty good job since I got you all to believe me. Glancing at the king, I said, you also tricked us about your husband. He looks too healthy to be dead. My dear king, would it be possible for me to call you grandpa outside of working hours? I asked. The king laughed out loud. I would love that. Unfortunately, I don't have a kid, but now I have a grandkid and this makes me so happy, he replied. My mom and my sister were still in shock. My mom shuddered and began talking. She asked grandma, your second husband was a king and you hid that from me? Philippe was a prince back then. He took the throne after his dad and became the king of Tanuvatu. You rejected our marriage without even getting to know him. You refused to see me for years. I wanted to give you a chance to mend our relationship. I came to live with you, but you wasted that chance. I had some terrible days living in your home, Grandma responded. Mom begged her, oh, please forgive me. I wouldn't have treated you the same way if I had known you were a queen. I'm your daughter. It's me who should be the future queen. Please think again. My mom needs to be the queen. I need to be a princess. M Matilda can't even make popcorn. She'll fail as a princess. Iris yelled. King Philippe shut them down. Don't waste your energy. We've decided who our new princess and future queen will be. Princess Matilda will also be the owner of the royal treasury. We are worth $128 billion and only members of the royal family have access to this money. Dear princess, it's time for us to go. We will take you to your new country on the Royal Air Force. The people of Tanuvatu can't wait to meet you. 
As I was getting into the car, I heard my mom say, $128 billion is a lot of money. You can give me one billion and that would be enough for me. I have to be the queen. Now, I live in the royal palace of Tanuvatu. Our country is the largest and most beautiful island in the Pacific Ocean. You can come visit me if you ever happen to come here. Hope to see you then. Goodbye for now. <laughs>